racing, particularly Formula One, is dominated by two simple words track limits. The driver is trying to push the edge of what is possible to gain that itty bit a little bit of extra lap time. And part of that isn't helped by how modern racetracks are constructed. At some point in the early 2000s, the FIA decided that tarmac runoff was better for drivers' health and safety. And Charlie Whiting of the FIA, in conjunction with the FIM, so motorcycles equivalent of the FIA, came to a compromise over what was safer. MotoGP, World Superbikes and stuff were sharing tracks with Formula 1 at this time. I think they still do in some cases. And despite the complaints online, the tarmac runoff isn't exactly a new thing. The upgraded Hockenheim from 2002 had tarmac on the outside of the hairpin and on the outside of Turn 1. And on the first lap of the 2002 German Grand Prix, Eddie Irvine took full advantage of that, with Montoya using all the tarmac later on at the hairpin when he battled Kimi Raikkonen. Following the Hockenheim renovations, the newer tracks like Shanghai, Bahrain, Istanbul and those kinds of places followed suit with the older tracks like Silverstone Spa, Monza, Imola, you name it, getting similar upgrades. So this changes the way the drivers attack the track for qualifying, closing down gaps in the race and then when entering car-on-car -car combat. And this all allows them to open up the track and take full advantage of the racing line. And this video kind of makes a return to a long forgotten series called How Motorsport Works, where instead of looking through the history books at a particular thing or doing an opinion piece on a particular thing, I look at a technical thing, break it down into itty bitty little bite sized chunks so if you're new to this whole motorsport business, you can understand something a little bit better. So really the point of this video is to try and explain how the drivers are going to make the most out of what is available to get the most lap time because you might have heard like Martin Brundle or people like that talking about using all of the track. So why do they use all the track? Let's find out. The racing line is essentially the fastest way around the track. Outside in is the TLDR of it all and it basically straightens out each corner as much as possible. You would think that the drivers would stick to the inside because it's the shortest line and that's how Elish McColgan does it in the 10,000 meters at the Diamond League Athletics. But she is running at a certain speed that she can keep up through the 100 meter radius bends of a running track. A racing car works slightly different to Elish McColgan. So here's an example at a particular corner. This is the final corner at Laguna Seca, a simple 90 degree left hander. Well, 90 degrees ish. It's a simple process. Stay on the outside, break, carry the speed towards the apex, and once you're at the apex, get on the throttle and try to get to max throttle as fast as you can to maximize your acceleration without breaking traction and spinning the car. Super simple stuff, really. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, this is very, very bare bones stuff. Some corners you can break and get on the power before the apex, Mulsanne and Arnage at Indianapolis, Luffield at Silverstone, and many, many more, but this is broken down super simple. Those corners, it's like slow in, fast out, but that's not something that you can apply to every corner, really. Also, I've done like three track days in my life, so I'm not a pro racing driver by any stretch of the imagination. I usually do all my racing over there, where it's cheaper, warmer, and I can reset if I crash. Now see what happens when I try to turn in doing the long distance runner line. The apex speed is a lot slower, and my top speed at the other end is going to be a lot slower. I'll be easily caught and or overtaken in an actual race. The arc through the corner is a lot narrower and it gives me way less room to play with. Laguna Seca is also an old school track which gives you way less opportunity to take liberties with what's available. So let's look at somewhere where there's a lot more room to play with. We'll take the first Mulsanne chicane at Le Mans. And I've picked this particular chicane because, well if you saw my live stream the other weekend, I've done a lot of laps around Le Mans lately so it makes sense to cover it. <laughs> There's two ways to attack this. The first is to do it in a way that I call the goody two-shoes method, where you keep the wheels on the curbs and go on your merry way back up the Mulsanne straight. I've drawn that out in a blue line for you. Or I can take the pro eSport line, which is totally legal on this version by the way, where you have the car straddling the curb and this works out better for you if you're trying this at home. Because if you use the pro eSport line, you are keeping the car all the way to the right on that first right-hander. When you turn in for the left-hander, you've got a much more opened up corner to then be able to carry more speed. The car is also going to be straighter and you can get the power down better. And by cutting the second right-hander that leads back out onto the Mulsanne, you've straightened the corner out as much as you can. And you've got a bigger run up into Mulsanne corner. It's also why these pro drivers don't want to carry the speed too far beyond the apex because when they get out onto the next straight, they're getting onto the power later. So by the time they reach a certain point on the track, they're going to be 
I don't know, 120 miles an hour. The person that was able to do it properly would probably be doing 125, 130 miles an hour, just picking arbitrary numbers out of my head here. But either way, one is going slower than the other, and one is dropping a lot of lap time relative to the opponents. It's why corners like La Source at Spa, the Mont Saint Chicanes at Le Mans, Indianapolis and Arnage at Le Mans as well, basically any corner before a long straight will be so crucial. Could mean the difference between 190 miles an hour at the next braking zone or 185. Again, picking arbitrary numbers here. If the car being used has a hybrid battery, you're not wasting your lapse allocation deploying it to get back on target. If you follow me, you know, get the top speed back up. So what I thought I would do for this next portion of the video is do a little demonstration. I'm going to drive the same car at the same track twice. Once doing it staying off the curbs and being a goody two shoes with the white lines and the other taking it right up to the limit of what I can use and what is possible and see what the difference is in lap time. Now again, I'm not a pro racing driver, I just pretend to be one on the internet, and this all just serves as a way of demonstrating how the best drivers in the real world of motorsport, from Hamilton and Verstappen to Sutton and Van Gisbergen, use all the track to get the most out of their lap times, and why they are much better at doing it than everybody else. It will also test my ability to use all of the track, because when it comes to doing so, I am bloody awful at doing it, but either way, I hope this is a useful demonstration for you.
So the times are on your screen. I'm recording all of this after the fact because I wanted to see them at the same time that you do and try and draw some conclusions as to what is what, if you follow me. By using all of the track, I was able to knock a substantial amount off my time, nearly 1.5 seconds. And for some bonus number crunching and data, I took all the Apex speeds over the best Goody Two Shoes lap and best Pro Star lap to compare those as well. With the exception of a couple of corners, so turn 7, which is the second part of that left right flick going down the hill, and turn 11, which is the uphill right hander before the final two corners, I was faster through every corner, some of them by a considerable amount. Some it doesn't look like I was that much faster, but it adds up. And there are multiple reasons for this. The first part is that I had much more open corners to work with. By opening up the corner, the radius is increased and you can carry more speed. Second to this is that I had more confidence in the car. Now I don't know if that's because I'm used to driving in a certain way, but when doing the keeping it in the line style lap, it was all very tentative. Breaking a little bit earlier, trying to keep it within white lines and so on, but the apex speeds are still sort of similar in some cases. But on the pro style lap, I'm breaking later, I'm chucking it in, I'm knowing 99.7% of the time it's going to stick, and so on. Now while we're on that subject, do allow a little bit of leeway here because I've tried to take the speeds from the same points at every corner, but I might be out by a couple of feet here or there. And also allow for tyre warm-up, tyre degradation, fuel burning off and things like that because I did it all on one hot stint to save time. But the goody two-shoes lap was done on the third timed lap where, in iRacing, your tyres are actually working. But a substantial gain in time, mostly by using all of the track. Okay, braking a little bit later has helped here and there, but by opening up the track, more time gained. Like I said, there are some caveats to this, but you can see the lap time difference. And that second lap, I don't know about you, but looked faster as well. A lot faster. But the thing is, I've done this in a video game where I've had unlimited tries at setting a fast lap. I actually spun the car three times at turn four because I'm just not used to the way that F3 car works. It's been a long time since I've driven it. But the pros, they're going out and they're absolutely banging in these hot laps with metronomic precision every single time. At least when they carry that into the race, they're doing it with metronomic precision every single time. And I guess that's what separates the elite from the amateurs. So then a look at how pro racing drivers will use all the track to set unbelievable lap times. I hope this video has come across well for you. It has been a while since I did one of these kinds of videos, but if you did enjoy it and learned something at the same time, then do like the video. And for more stuff like this, get subscribed with the bell on so you never miss out. And even suggest something that you want me to cover, that you want me to explain, because then that gets me researching and stuff, you learn stuff, and I have more content. Keck. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon for the continued support, and if you want to help contribute to the picture purchasing piggy bank, then a link is in the description along with links to Discord, socials, and my affiliate links. Well, there's super thanks for the one and done donations and memberships if you want to go down that route. So until next time, I've been Ada Mord, have a great day wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.